What's up, superstars? Back to another video. You got Superstar Rob and you got Superstar Nation. How you guys doing? Oh, oh man, beating me up every single day. If you haven't already, don't forget, become a superstar, smash the subscribe button, join the superstar fam, and hit the bell notification button to get every single video every single day. Also, our VIPs, two nine a month, star beside your name, master special giveaways. Um, We've got a lot of super duper rares coming up right now, which is amazing. Uh, we got this thing for all you guys. Uh, thank you all so much for your support. You can always reach out to us on X, Instagram, or Discord. Guys, join the Discord below. You must join the Discord. You have to join the Discord because this is where we run all of our gifting programs. So make sure you guys check it out. Because uh, if you do use any of the affiliate links, you got to let us know so that we can give you stars for the end of the month where you can win some pretty cool prizes. All right, guys. Today, there was some big news out of the Bitcoin world. And it's big news because you have the CEO of BlackRock, who is the most you know traditional kind of investor, right? Larry Fink. He is the most traditional kind of guy, old school guy, you know, runs one of the biggest corporations in the world. And you know, he's talking big about Bitcoin right now. And he had a lot of thoughts on Bitcoin. He said he was wrong. He said he was wrong about Bitcoin and what he thought about it five years ago. Why don't we listen in to see uh, what exactly he had to say. A leader in willing to embrace crypto. You yeah. have made it so that people can be in Bitcoin. We hear that you are thinking about Ethereum. These are incredible things. How Now, BlackRock is not known as a, uh, a gunslinger by any means. So you obviously must believe that this may be as an alternative. Is this an alternative uh, in order to be able, because of the a deficit, maybe something long-term people should have? Absolutely. Um, as you know, I was a skeptic. <laughs> yes, I you know I was a proud skeptic, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I studied it, learned about it, and I came away saying, "Okay, you know, my opinion five years ago was wrong. Here's my opinion today. This is what I believe in today. I believe the opportunity today. I believe Bitcoin is legitimate. I'm not trying to say there's not bet misuses right. like everything else, but it is a <laughs> legitimate financial instrument." that allows you to have maybe uncorrelated, non-correlated type of returns. I believe it is an instrument that you invest in when you're more frightened, though. It is an instrument when you believe that co countries are debasing their currency, de debasing their currency by excess deficits, and some countries are. I believe we have um, countries where you're frightened of your everyday existence and have an opportunity to invest in, in a, a something that is outside your country's uh, you know, control, then you can have more financial control. And so I'm a, a major believer that there is a role for Bitcoin in, in portfolios. I believe you're going to see that as, an, as one of the asset classes that we all look at. I look at it as digital gold, as I said before, and I do believe there's a, a there's a there's a real need for everyone to look at it as as one alternative to I would say the optimism that I have in the world. If you want to hedge hope, Bitcoin is not a an instrument for hope unless you're hopeful you're going to make a lot of money on it. <laughs> but it, I, I look at it as a vehicle in which you're expressing your your financial acumen in something that you're more frightened of the world, you're more frightened of your existence. And I believe there's a great industrial use for it. And I, and I think a lot of people are missing that. I couldn't agree more. I changed my mind. Guys, this is huge. All right. Let's just break down what he said. These professional investors are always interested. The very first thing that really stood out to me was the idea of non-correlated asset classes. <clears throat> you guys know Ray Dalio, some of the best investors of the world. They are a big believer that in order to have high returns with a low standard deviation and a low downside risk when things might get a little bit messy, you want to make really intelligent bets in a group of different asset classes. And one of those asset classes, what Larry Fink is saying has, has now come is Bitcoin. Uh, it's now the, it's a digital currency. It is not necessarily going to be correlated to fiat. It may not be necessarily correlated to the stock market. It may not necessarily be correlated to other investment classes like bonds. Um, and I think that that's something that is extremely intriguing to the investment world uh, and to um, any professional investors. And, and, you know, we know that, you know, these companies that are, that invest in all sorts of different things are always looking for an asset class mix. Um, and cryptocurrencies has now kind of shown itself as, as being now a separate 
asset class that doesn't necessarily follow everything else. That diversification is exactly what these investors are looking for because when some other portfolio goes down, maybe something like Bitcoin that's non-correlated or other cryptocurrencies that are not correlated to kind of their meat and potatoes investing in the stock market, let's say, or private some private equity, investing in businesses, you know, loaning out money for infrastructure projects. There's so many things that these institutions do. Uh, but he, what he's saying is that at an institutional level, now Bitcoin is actually going to be another asset class that can help create that diversification with that upside risk, as well as protecting you on the downside risk too. Uh, when, when different things happen in the world, like he didn't quite say it like that, but that's how I interpret it when he said non-correlated, then he went in and he talked about countries that misuse their, their currency. Uh, I think an example of that's Venezuela, right? Venezuela was an example of one that had massive inflation. They were, they were printing money like crazy. And I think I heard rumors once that Bitcoin uh, was being used as a currency in Venezuela because they could not trust the government. Uh, the way that they were going into debt with the currency and causing mass inflation, uh, people started using Bitcoin. And he talked a lot about kind of that frightening, that frightening investment. You know, we talk about being hopeful in the world when we buy companies for growth because they're going to bring more productivity to society. They're going to invent things that are going to make our lives easier. That's that hopefulness. What he's saying here is that maybe Bitcoin, Bitcoin's the opposite. Maybe you're in a war-torn country where, you know, or maybe you're in a country where your government has too much control over your money. Um, I mean, that's, and that's subjective about what those countries can be. That could be even the first world ones, but there's, there's definitely, uh, you know, a, 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 a reason to own Bitcoin because it gets your money out of the regulated system. You know, he talked about how it can be misused like anything, but people are interested in this because they want to get their money away from the regulated system, from the banking system. They don't want the control to always be in other third parties. That's why Bitcoin has been so interesting. And absolutely, it's been misused by bad actors. However, it also could be used for the common person to help improve their, their quality of life by giving them more freedom with their money if they live in one of these countries, let's say, where they don't have the same freedoms that maybe me and you enjoy. Um, he also talked about alternative investing. It's an alternative form of investing. We talked about the different non-correlated asset classes. Uh, but, you know, people do that sometimes with art, right? They buy art. It's considered an alternative investment. They think that this piece will go up in value in the future for collectors. We're very familiar with that. Um, and then he called it digital gold. And I, I really, really like that term because what he's saying is that it, Bitcoin and all the other cryptocurrencies that you could buy, Bitcoin is basically like the digital gold. It's kind of like the most secure coin. Now, it's by secure, I mean it's number one, it's king because everybody knows it. It truly, you know, it has a scarcity at that lock. I think it's 21 million. You know, it has those having rules and it's just completely roaming in a <clears throat> decentral decentralized environment. Um, and, and many people for that reason want to have Bitcoin in their portfolio. So when you start seeing institutions and CEOs, for example, of BlackRock talking about Bitcoin in this manner, it's hard not to feel like Bitcoin is going to be something that will be around for a long time. I remember, um, Warren Buffett saying it's going right to zero. He said it's going right to zero, but it makes you wonder after all this time, if it really is going to zero, but there is inherent value in it right? The value of Bitcoin may not be the productivity that we think about with companies like Warren Buffett's thinking of, where a company, you know, they have employees, they come to work every day, they invent things, they make sales, they have revenues, they have expenses, you balance out the sheets, and you got your earnings, right? And those earnings eventually could be dividends. Bitcoin doesn't quite do that. But Bitcoin is still a useful tool that has value in its ability to separate itself from the regulated system, to be a non-correlated asset for that reason. There are people in countries that actually will rely on Bitcoin in order to transact. And I think that there will continue to be a lot more industrial use cases, using his words of industrial, industrial use cases of cryptocurrencies in general, especially Bitcoin in the future. Um, so, it, I, I mean, this is, I think, huge news. We had to cover it today. Uh, to, I think uh, we had another video planned, but we're going to take care of that maybe on Wednesday instead. But I want just to get that out there, that this is some massive news right now that we got. Um, and I'd love to hear all your thoughts. What do you guys think about this? Um, do you guys think that uh, that 
I knew about it. Larry, Larry Fink is onto something with this. Do you think that um, this is something that he maybe he's late to the party? That's pretty obvious, maybe to you before. Do you think that more institutions, more CEOs of these major investment firms are going to also uh, come to the same realization? I want to hear your thoughts below. And if you haven't already, don't forget become a superstar, smash the subscribe button, join the superstar fam, hit the bell notification to see every single video every single day. Also, superstar VIPs, two nine a month. Stop beside your name, access special giveaways, guys. Thank you so much. Take care. See you next one.